Hi, my artist. So today we are going to work on a panda picture. So before we start that, I wanted to give you just a few facts about pandas so you know a little bit more about them. So they are bears, but most people don't really, they don't seem to have the same fear that we might have of other bears, but they still are bears. Um, they are vegetarians 99% of the time, so most of the time they eat bamboo. But they also eat eggs, small animals, and other types of meat. They have to eat a lot, so they eat about 10 to 16 hours a day. So most of their day is spent eating. When they are born, they're very little, so they're only about 4 to 8 ounces at birth, which is very, very tiny. But by the time they're grown, they can be anywhere from 165 pounds to a little over 350 pounds. And they can be anywhere from four to five feet tall. And they're normally found in Southeast Asia. So what you need today uh, to draw our panda is you need a piece of paper, you need a pencil, and either markers, crowns, something to color with. Okay, so go ahead and get that stuff and we're going to get started. Okay, so here's our panda that we're going to draw. This is my example one. I'm going to set it off to the side and then we'll work on our other one, okay? So what we're going to do to start with is we're going to make his head. Now, if you notice with mine, his head takes up most of the picture, all right? We're going to try and get it as round as we can, okay? So we're going to do a pretty big circle. All right, now, if it's not perfect, it's okay. I'm going to go over that one more time so you can see it a little bit better. But again, I am drawing this in pencil, so I can erase if I mess up, okay? Now I'm going to add his shoulders, so I'm going to do two curved lines down. All right, we've got that. Now we're going to add his ears, which are like two bumps. One and two. Now that one kind of went off the page just a little bit, and that's okay. Alright, now we have to make his eyes, his nose, and his mouth, okay? Fix his ears so they're a little more even. Okay, now we're going to start with his eyes, and similar to our eyes, they are kind of like a football shape, okay? So we want to put them on the top half of his face, towards the middle. So, I'm going to do two curves, and I'm going to try and get them as even as I can. So right now he looks like he's sleeping. I'm going to do the bottom half. All right, next we have to do the black patches around his eyes. So those are kind of like an oval shape around each eye. Something like that. Now he needs a triangle for his nose. And you're going to make two lines, kind of like a J and a backwards J, or like two fish hooks. And then I'm just going to do lightly make a circle around that. So that's going to be where his snout is. Okay. All right, now what we have to do is color him in, okay? Before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and add the light spots on his eyes. So the reason we're going to be able to tell it's his eyes is we're going to leave a light spot where the light is hitting. So pick somewhere on both eyes to add a spot that's going to stay white, okay? Then you're going to take your black and you're going to color in his ears, the patches around his eyes, his eyes, his nose, in his chest okay now what I did was I used my marker to color in his eyes his nose and to add texture to his chest and his ears okay so when I talk about texture I mean 
something like you're drawing to make it look like it feels a certain way. So if you look at my jacket, it's fuzzy and you can probably see that it's fuzzy because of the texture. Okay. Now it's real. You can feel it, but my paper, you can't feel the texture, but you can see that it looks like fur. And how I did that was I did little lines like this over and over again to make it look like his fur. Okay. So you can do that. You can do little lines all over it to make it look like his fur. I did that for the chest and for the ears. Okay. So you can spend some time doing that. I'm just going to go ahead and color mine in. I'm not going to add all the texture because I want to be able to show you how to work on your background, okay? But you are welcome to do that. I colored the patches of his eyes lighter than I colored his eyes because I wanted his eyes to stand out, okay? Because they're both black. So if you color both really dark, you won't be able to see the difference between the eyes and the patches around his eyes. All right, so I'm going to press hard. On my eyes, but I'm leaving that light spot totally white. Same thing on the other eye. I'm going to go ahead and color in the patch around his eye. Now, you may not have known this, I actually didn't know this either, but they are black and white to camouflage themselves. So when we talk about camouflage, we mean a way of protecting themselves by blending into their habitat or their environment where they live. Okay, so black and white seem like that would be kind of a hard color to blend in places. But where they're at in the wintertime, it snows a lot. And then they also normally live in the forest where there are lots of shadows. So when it's snowy, the white part of their fur blends in with the snow. And then when they're in the forest, the black blends in with the shadows. So it's actually to help them blend in. All right, it might help them to... Um, find food. It might help them hide from things that would hurt them. I'm not sure if they have any predators. I wouldn't think so besides people. Uh, unfortunately, they are. I um, don't know that they're endangered yet, but um, they are, I think, one that scientists are watching because partly I think it's very hard for them to um, have babies because like I said they are very very little when they're born and I just don't think they have very many babies I think normally they have one baby at a time and I don't think maybe they might be like elephants and have a, a long time that they're pregnant I'm not sure but I just know that it is tough for them to have babies I also know that um, earthquakes have affected their habitats and so they're struggling with that. And then I think deforestation has also impacted them because they eat, like I said, lots and lots of food every day. And so they have to have lots of bamboo to eat. And if that bamboo gets destroyed, then they uh, don't have anything they can eat off of. About got all this colored in except for his ears and his nose. So again, if you want to add your texture, you can. It will make it look better. Or you can just color it in like I'm doing.
going to color in his nose. And I keep calling mine a boy. I don't know why. Really no reason. It could be a she. And that would be totally fine. All right. Now what I can do is I could add some shadows. So I could go back lightly with my black and add a little bit of shadows around his snout. Maybe around his nose, under his mouth, around the side of his head. Okay, under his chin. After you have all that done, then you get to design the background. Like I said, uh, pandas normally live in the forest so probably what you're going to be seeing is lots of trees so i would do a background with some bamboo sticking up some brown for the tree trunks You could even do some limbs sticking out with some tree leaves on them. You could have some leaves sticking off your bamboo. Uh, you could even just do some green scribbles to make it look like those trees back there. You just have to be careful and not get on the white of your panda. Okay, so decorate your background, figure out what's behind your panda bear. You could even have more pandas behind him. All right, you could have some blue showing through for the sky. It could be snowy. All right, we did say that uh, their white is to camouflage them in the snow. So you could have it snowing, that's totally up to you. So figure out what your panda is doing and then design the background for it, okay? I hope you enjoyed this lesson and learned a lot and hopefully I will see you soon. Bye!